Welcome back to TalkNorth.com. Thank you for listening. If you can, please download before you listen. It helps our business. I'd also like to thank our producer, Brandon Morton, and let you know if you'd like to sponsor this program or any of the programs on the network. You can reach me at jsouhan47 at gmail.com. For his next trick, Michael Russo is going to try to do an entire show while looking at his phone, typing, and ignoring me. Oh, wait. That's every show. I know. I, I'm trying to I'm trying to get the uh, Wi-Fi in this place to work. But well, you could have done that before we started the I show. I know. I know. But we're in a rush because we have a lot of urgent things to talk about, like you meeting a WWE wrestler. Yeah, that's true. We will talk about that. This is the Russo Suhan Show. I'm Jim Suhan. He's Michael Russo from The Athletic. Uh, thanks to everybody who has listened and made this show su- su- such a success. I can't say that, but you understand. Uh, thanks to Twill and the Dining Gallery, FixologyRepair.com, and your State Farm agent, Tony Hoagland. Uh, so tell me the wrestling story before we get to yeah. the playoffs here. Um, yeah, I went to, uh, well, I was down in Des Moines covering the Iowa Wild uh, the last, uh, or the three days, games one and two. And uh, Sunday night, Easter Sunday was game one, four o'clock game. Wrote my story, went back to the hotel around nine o'clock. It's Easter Sunday night, so nothing's open. And so I went to the hotel bar. There's this, uh, you know, beautiful woman at the end of the bar, and I just happened to sit next to her because, because frankly, just happened yeah. to sit next to her. Well, because fans. you know the the bar, you know, there was like Brad Bombardier, uh, Tommy Curvers, uh, Dan Myers were all sitting at the bar, so there was only really one seat available. Wait, Dan Myers was sitting at a bar. Yeah, Are you, you're shocking me with all these revelations. <laughs> so, so they were talking. So I sat next to this woman, and she and I started talking, and and. Um, and uh, she's like, uh, I'm like, where are you from? And she's, she's from, I'm from it's Florida. And I'm line, like, yeah, I know. I, I've learned a lot over the years. And, and she goes, um, she goes, uh, did I knock? Uh, no, we're good. Okay, sorry. Um, can't see. So uh, she said she was from Florida. I'm like, oh, I'm from Florida. So, um, you know, so I knew her where she's Wait, from. Wait, you're from Florida? Yeah, I'm learning so much. I know. So, and I'm, she's like, what do you do? And I'm, I'm a sports writer. And she goes, and I'm like, what do you do? And she goes, kind of sheepishly, she goes, well, I'm a professional athlete. I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, I'm in Des Moines, right? And she's a little thing, too, you know? It's like, um, and, uh, and I'm like, what do you do? And she goes, and I knew that, I didn't, it didn't dawn on me, but I knew that the, that the WWE was at the arena the next day. And she goes, well, I'm a, I'm a wrestler, and I'm in the WWE, and it turns out that the woman I was talking to, um, again, I didn't. I feel bad, but I didn't know who she was. She, she's Alicia Fox, who um, is the longest contracted female wrestler on the WWE. Thirteen oh, wow. years, yeah, since she was twenty. Okay, uh, she's thirty three now, and um, and uh, so she and I talked for like three and a half hours. I mean, I know her entire life story. I mean, everything. And, uh, and so she, by the end of the night, like we're exchanging information and, and, uh, she's like, do you want to come and and watch me wrestle tomorrow? I'm like, absolutely. So she put me on her guest list the next day. So so she leaves, she goes upstairs at like, you know, 2 a.m. or something and, and Curvers and, and, or Curvers had already left, but, uh, Bomber and Dan's like, what's going on? Who is that woman? And I'm like, you know who that is? That she's a, she's a professional wrestler. And Dan goes, what? Like Who? And I go, Alicia Fox, and he goes crazy. I didn't realize that Dan, now, I mean, actually, shockingly, not knowing Dan, this shouldn't shock me, no, that shouldn't. he was a wrestling fanatic. And it was like every storyline, every wrestler, blah, 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 blah. So he's like, you got to take me. So I text her the next morning. I'm like, hey, can you add to my guest list? And she's like, yeah, no problem. So she puts me down for like three tickets. And so Dan and I get to uh, Wells Fargo Arena, and we're going down, and we're going down, and we're going down, and... They're pointing us to the way. Next thing I know, we're two rows from the ring. And it was f- freaking entertaining. I mean, it was three. First of all, it is a long night. It's like four hours, WWE Raw. Like, they do two wrestling matches before you go live on USA Network. 
Then you have the whole bill, and then afterwards there's even more. And it's just fascinating kind of being there, the whole production of it, you know, how when they go to commercial, what they do to kind of edit stuff. And um, I will say, as scripted as it is, it is painful. Like, these are oh, athletes. I mean, that's the thing. It, it, the outcomes <laughs> oh might be fake, God. but you can't fake jumping in the air and doing yes, backflips and slamming somebody on oh the ground. Oh, my God. And the, when they slap each other in the top of the chest, I mean, that stuff is real. Like, that is not, like... I know a lot of former wrestlers, like yeah. Jim Brunzel, they have injuries from oh, doing all God. this stuff. They walk and around. They look like old football players. Yeah. They have bad knees, bad elbows, bad backs, everything. Yeah. So, um, so first of all, the night before, after I met her, I, like, Googled her. And next time I was, I was up two hours, like, watching all her videos, reading everything about her, like, n- even know more of her life story and a lot, start connecting all the dots. So she, during the, the night... She's texting me like, hey, send me where you are because I'll look for you during the, during the match and things like that. And I'm like, I said to Dan, I swear to God, if she pulls me up on the freaking ring, I'm not going. You're going. He's like, oh, I'm going. <laughs> so, um, but I will say it was entertaining. Like, um, and then I watched her in her match. And uh, then she texted us after. She's like, hey, you know, come out. I'd like to hear what you think of it. So we go back to the, the hotel. And there she is sitting at the bar when we got back. Um, and, uh, and proceeded to spend four hours with her that night talking to her. And um, just an awesome woman. Um, and uh, she's got a ton of projects outside of the WWE. And, uh, and uh, you know, frankly, whenever she retires, whenever that is down the stretch, she's obviously going to have a bright future. She is, she's one of the most intelligent people I've ever talked to. She, like, you know, she's into holistic stuff and philosophy. And she, 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 there were like 50 things that she said that was like whew, right over my head. I'm like a lowly dumb sports writer. So it was, it was, it was really cool. It was, uh, you know, it was just kind of like it just shows you like, you know, how in life it's just so weird how like, you know, you're driving a demo. Moines and who knows at the end of the night I'm going to become buddies with a WWE wrestler and and like even just since you know just chatting with her the last couple of days so I mean it's just it's just it's just crazy the way life works you know but I mean going to Des Moines Iowa more to the point it's crazy the way your life works <laughs> because yeah. you are like frozen forest Gump you go to a hockey arena or you go to a hockey event and you meet, you end up meeting people you end up yeah. hanging out with I mean and, and part listen. You know, I'm I'm the opposite. I'm boring. I'm old. I'm married. I have a dog. Yeah. I just when my default position is go home and play with the dog. You do these things. Mm. You meet really interesting people. You meet interesting people from the music uh, business and great bands, and you travel and do cool stuff. Well, it's funny. You know, like I was thinking, like you know, when you drive three and a half hours each way to play, you kind of psychoanalyze yourself. And you know, I am a like I'm a weird person. Like I like if you met me. At a rest at a restaurant or a bar, and you started talking to me about the wild. I mean, I hate to sound like this. This is going to kind of sound like I'm an I'm an absolute jerk off, but but I mean, I, I am not interested. Like I the God, like like I will I love talking to people, but the second you like start asking me stuff about the wild or things like that, it's just like you know. It's then just, you're back in work mode. Ask my mother. Here you're, you're like, back. She in, knows you're back in work. I, mode. I, like the other night, she's like she 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 said something to me. I'm like, Mom, at ten o'clock at night, I don't want to talk about Paul Fenton right now. Okay, like I you know like sorry, and and that's just how I am. Like same thing. Like I just but if you want to talk to me at anything else. Right. I'm, I'm more than willing, and I think that's why, is that, like, you know, like, I, I meet all these fascinating people and get along with them. It's like, you know, it, it, like, I, I love learning about people's life, and I've never met a WWE wrestler in my entire life, and just hearing what their life is like, like, what she was doing, like, you know, like, she was on Monday Night Raw, so Tuesday morning, she flies back to Jacksonville, and she lives, like, south of Jacksonville, and, um, and then she's home for, like, two, three days with her, you know, life, and then all of a sudden, she gets up, and she's going to go to Lexington this weekend, and then she does it all over again the following week, and just the stuff, like, like, you know, like, it was fascinating, like, on the day of her, her match, like, she, like, none of the wrestlers know what's going to happen until, essentially, you know, they get, they, they, they show up at the, that's, like, even the game day, the quote-unquote game mm-hmm. day, shows up at the rink at one, what she does until her match at 10 o'clock that night, you know, jump rope and jumping jacks and, you know, eat and roll arounds in the ring and all the stuff that you just never even think about. And, um, and then when do you find out what your match is and what, and then, you know, the rehearsing with your, whoever you're fighting and all the drama that even goes into the bind is like anything. It's, it's, there's drama. I'm sure. And. Um, it was just, it's fascinating. Like, you know, she learned very quickly. I was a reporter, you know, mm-hmm. like, <laughs> like, uh, you know, I, like, 
you know, her whole personal life. I know everything. I know her cat's names and you know, like, it's just, it's funny. I mean, it's, it's just, uh, it, it was just, it was kind of cool. And so, um, uh, but it, it is, I mean, it's like, it's been an exciting couple of weeks, it's like a couple of days before I sat five rows behind home plate with Aristotle Hansky and his wife at the yep. Marlins game. And, uh, you know, that was, that was really neat. And, and, uh, and so like, you know, there's just, it is, it's kind of, it's kind of neat. Like, uh, when, when the season ends, all the stuff that you get to kind of do. Absolutely. So. All right, let's talk hockey next. I'm, yeah. I'm glad, no, I'm glad you told me about all that. I think it's really cool. Uh, let's talk hockey next. Let's also thank Twill in the Dining Galleria, primary sponsor, uh, Alden Shoes, everything head to toe. Cool hats, cool belts, cool, cool accessories, cool travel accessories. Uh, and I wear the Johnny O, the Kevin Millar. The, I'm sorry, it's Kevin Millar. Kevin Millar, the baseball player. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Peter Millar. Well. They are Peter Millar, uh, crown shop. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I wear their Stenson shirts. I bought a bunch of those. I will never need another dress shirt as long as I live. That's the great thing about Twill. You go there, you buy stuff. It's quality stuff. It's going to last you forever. Jim usually doesn't like to shop for clothes. I don't like it when he shops for clothes either because he used to buy stuff I'd want to throw out. That's why I'm so glad he's found Twill in the Edina Galleria. He likes shopping there because of the comfortable environment and the friendly staff. He finds clothes that actually fit him properly and are high-quality brands that will look great for years, whether he's golfing or working. Our favorites so far are Peter Millar, Johnny O, and Barber. We spend our money at Twill because we love the clothes and we love the no-pressure shopping. Drop by Twill in the Edina Galleria for the best shopping experience and best clothes you'll find in the Twin Cities. So I have Stanley Cup Finals uh, 03. I'm covering Devil's Ducks, and we're staying at the Westin in Times Square. Boston Red Sox are staying there. Kevin Millar walks in the lobby after a Saturday night game. I think it was a Saturday night. Friday night or Saturday night. No, it must I don't know. It doesn't matter. So, um, pretty sure Saturday. And, uh, and I knew him a little bit from covering the Marlins. So I go up to him and I start talking to him. And, and he goes up, you know, basically comes to room. And then he comes down, like, completely changed his clothes real quick. And he's meeting guys in the lobby. And I'm like, where are you guys going? And he goes, oh, we're going out. It's Saturday night at, like, 1 a.m. And I know they have a 1 p.m. game the next day. Okay. So I'm like, holy mackerel. Like, that's baseball, just, we, yeah. as a baseball writer, we used to call it bounceability. Yeah. The ability to go out all night and still do your job the next day. So whether I, you're a writer or a player. So next morning, I call a buddy of mine as a joke and I say, hey, because I knew he gambled. I'm like, if you want to do, if you want to make a bunch of money today, throw everything you own on the Yankees. Because the, I'm like, I saw in the lobby last night, like the Red Sox were going out 12 hours before the game. So anyway, Sunday night game. Uh, Ducks and and uh, we're in we're in New Jersey. And I go to the game and I'm in the press box on the Halo. It's like 8 p.m., 9 p.m. or whatever. And I realized I never looked to see what the Red Sox score was, and they won nine to one. Of or course. Something. And I te- I texted my friend right away, and I'm like, "Tell me you didn't put any money on the freaking Red Sox. I mean, on the Yankees." And and he's like, "No, thank God I didn't listen to you." Another common so. refrain among baseball writers when I was doing the job was that the Hall of Fame is full of guys who could hit with hangovers. Mm-hmm. No doubt. Uh, no, that is, they are professionals. No question about <laughs> it. All right, let's get to uh, some why. First of all, let's address this because, you know, I do a lot of outstate radio and uh, get calls a lot. And the first question I've been getting lately is boy, all these upsets in, in the NHL playoffs, yeah. boy, couldn't the, the Wild could have made a run? I'm like, I don't think so. I yeah, just didn't. I agree with it. you. Now, I, I, like, during the year when they had all their guys, the Coils and Niederreiters, the Groundlands, I kept on saying that if this was the year that they make it, because you just saw it. Like, I covered this league. I watch Nashville. I watch Winnipeg. And they, they are not the same teams that they've been in the last couple of years. And in a lot of ways, I think it's kind of like the Wild. Like, when you've been around together for a while, all of a sudden, when you start to realize the effort it is to get to the point, it's like all of a sudden you start to actually dec- decline. And I think that's what's going on with those two teams. And um, I just felt like this in the Western Conference, there was no dominant team this year. And we, we saw it. I mean, to me, Calgary was one of the best teams in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the league this year, especially in the conference. And they were beat in the first round. And, and, and so all year long, I think I've been saying that San Jose, Calgary were probably the teams to beat in the West. And, um, and then I will say, I picked in my, our athletic thing, I picked San Jose to win the series, and right in the middle of the series, I changed my tune. I thought Vegas was going to go all the way. And then they lose um, in a controversial fashion, which we should talk about. Um, but this was the year, but I totally agree with you. The way that they were constructed at the end of the year, 
Um, the Wild, there's they, they would have been rolled over by Calgary. Absolutely. I mean, they are just, I mean, you saw, I mean, they were shut out 11 times. Um, didn't have a lot of depth. Obviously, a ton of injuries. 